So Joris, um, I've been told that you are working on a, a DAO contract, is that right? Actually, this one uh, that I want to discuss, I didn't make it myself. It's straight from the, the Ethereum white paper, but it's a still interesting one to uh, to discuss. So let's let's take a look at it. Yeah. So so DAO. That that sounds kind of mysterious. Well, what is what is a DAO? What is what is what are we talking about here? Well, probably DAO is something Chinese. I mean, last time I was uh, way off about the pronunciation of uh, Wei. Way so maybe DAO is also some kind of uh, Chinese thing, but in this context, it's the decentralized autonomous organization. You can explain better. Yeah, I think the idea <laughs> is that you have a, a organization that exists entirely on the blockchain, and um, including all of the assets that belong to that organization. So if I wanted to create a company, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of Cases where you know if you have to go through a bunch of paperwork, and if I want to create an office in the Netherlands and one in California, then I have to file and do all this stuff. Whereas a DAO, I can just um, you know create a little thing, contract on the on the blockchain, and say, here, Joris, uh, send him some you know bitcoins if he uh, puts together some you know nice videos or something like that. And that can actually, you know, it's a much lower cost to get started. And, um, you know, you can actually have the assets that are associated with the, the organization on the blockchain. So any kind of cryptographic assets. So that could be cryptocurrencies or it could be, um, you know, things that can be in a contract basis, like a smart property or something. So that, that sounds right. I mean, and uh, of course, because you can, can fully implement it yourself, you can choose to either make something capitalistic with with shareholders and uh, uh, and div paying dividends and managing well the, the the financial assets of the of the DAO but it could also be some kind of community uh, where you would have votes and you could have a democratic system where you need to have a majority agreement to add new members to it and there's no real financial uh, incentive being part of it yeah so this one is called the egalitarian DAO uh, and it's uh, egalitarian because all the members have a uh, equal weight to their to their votes so if they want to change the rules of the DAO itself they all have to uh, vote for it and if okay. uh, uh, 67 percent a two-thirds uh, majority um, passes uh, passes on the proposal then it will be uh, implemented actually why don't you walk us through this so it looks like we have this base fee checking fee checking thing which is going out of um, service right we're not gonna have to do this anymore sure I, the, the, right? the first two lines that's still the old-fashioned way with the entire gas thing that will no longer be needed so we can just okay. uh, skip it but other than that I think a lot of these uh, internals will still be the same for uh, future versions of Ethereum so we don't need to worry about that um, on lines three and four, yeah, it checks if the the sender, that is so the person that is triggering the the DAO by sending a transaction to them, if they have a record within the contract storage, so all the members they have for their own address, they have a non uh, a non zero uh, entry indicating that yeah. they're a member of the DAO that they can uh, they can participate that they can vote. And if somebody outside of that tries to trigger it, then it will just uh, stop the execution. So that's just another membership check on uh, lines three and four. Yeah. The next uh, thing is on line uh, line four. Actually, there, there there are three. You can give a little command to the to the DAO as a member, and that is part of the data uh, uh, the data fields for the transaction. And you can send it a zero, you can send it a one. And you can send it the two. Those are the three options. Okay. To if you send the zero, what you what you do is that you vote for an existing proposal. Okay. If you send a a, a one, it means that you create your a, a new proposal for a code change. And if you send a two, basically. It, it, it triggers the, 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 the tallying of the vote and then if it passes it will update the, the rules for the for the DAO itself. So these are the three options. So in the data zero field you have the well what is the, 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 the command that you want to send. And then in the data one field you can send I think it's an identifier of the of the proposal that you uh, that you want to make. 
so so what it does so instead of using the the identifier directly it calculates the the hash of the identifier and that hash is used as a as an offset within the contract storage to record uh well what what was the the i, I guess the unique number for this proposal okay. so in case you want to vote for an existing proposal it uses the 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 proposal offset so the the, the k that was uh, calculated um together with your own uh, identifier as a sender and then if you haven't voted positively for this uh, this change yet it will record uh, uh, your your vote to be uh, to be true and it will also increase the the counter that indicates how many people have uh, already voted for this uh, yeah. uh, for this change mm -hmm. so there's no way to withdraw your vote or cancel your vote anything so once you voted for it it's just there forever you cannot uh, cancel against it. it right there's just an absence of vote correct mm -hmm. also there's no there's no timeout so this will just go on forever until there's um, a majority a two-third majority now so this was actually if there was already a, a change proposed now if you are the first time if you actually want to create a, a change proposal you would be sending the the command one to the uh, to the to the DAO contract, and so, sorry to to add a wrinkle, but two thirds majority of of who, uh, because you know we have these sort of wrinkles in the contracts, but do we really have a a user? Um, so that we can track so the. Um, the contract initializes actually that's on the on the bottom mm -hmm. it uses this specific storage uh, location to mm -hmm. to check if it was uh, if it has been initialized or not mm -hmm. and so the first time it will actually be executed it checks if it um, if it has been initialized if not it will set initialization flag to uh, to to true and it will also for some kind of constant so i guess that would be the the founding party or the, the founding person it will make him or her a member of the of this uh, this um, this dao right within this current code example there is no way to add or remove uh, other members yet that would have to be implemented but of course that could be the first code change that this first member uh, to the dao would be would be submitting okay so right now it's just a one man uh, a one man DAO, uh, but I think it's just, uh, so this is more about showing how the, the code could, could modify itself than how you could add or remove members, but that would be a very logical expansion of this uh, of this DAO. Okay. But some of these expansions are difficult to uh, implement, so it's worth keeping in mind. Sure, exactly. Okay, so we, we, we just had a little sidestep about the initialization of the contract. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we were looking at how you would make a change proposal. So at lines 10 to 18, that's why that happens. Mm -hmm. So it needs to check the money that you uh, the, the, the money that you sent to the contract. It's enough to cover the fee that is required to to all the memory updates because every code change that you're going to submit, it will be stored into the into the contract storage and of course if you do a big code change then it can be quite expensive so before actually evaluating all of that it checks if you have sent enough enough money to the to the contract again this is something that's going to change a bit uh, soon with the with the gas and the gas price uh, but for now it's just one of these checks the other check is that the uh, there is not an existing uh, pro change proposal yet with the same identifier. So if it's already initialized before, uh, proposed mm -hmm. before, then it will just again stop executing the, mm -hmm. the contract. Mm -hmm. Now, in this little loop, what it's, uh, what it's doing, it is mm -hmm. copying all the data fields that you have uh, passed on, uh, starting with the, the, well, the, the, the third value. So the, the z value zero was the, the comment. Uh, value one was the identifier for the for the code change, and then the ones after are the actually well the Ethereum bytecodes 
EtherScript code that uh, that is uh, that is the change that you're proposing. So actually, you're sending the raw uh, EVM bytes in the in the contract call to uh, to change. Mm -hmm. So this is just a little a little loop going uh, until you run out of uh, uh, data to copy, and it will copy the data from the the transaction uh, parameters to the to the contract storage uh, directly. So this can be quite this can be quite expensive, and that is why the 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 the, the fee check was there initially. So after these bytes have been copied, it sets the memory flag for this uh, this this uh, this storage uh, location. Actually, it sets it to one, and that means actually that th there's already one vote for this change. So it just assumes that the per person submitting. Uh, submitting this code change he is uh, in favor of actually applying it and then the the next line line 18 it sets the length of all the data the data that was uh, was copied uh, it sets it to the to k plus one offset so later on you know exactly how many bytes to uh, to copy when you want to implement this uh, this uh, contract okay mm -hmm. so now actually once the contract proposal is there um, people can 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 start voting for it, and then if at some point, I guess if if you could monitor that from the outside or at a certain cutoff point, or just do it try it once every couple of days, um, you can send it the command to to the contract, and in that case, it will check how many people have actually voted for the contract, and if that is more or equal to the amount of members to the uh, to the DAO, mm -hmm. uh, well, taking two, two thirds of that. That's uh, a bit confused. Isn't that, um, doesn't it, the plus one that tells us how many people are in the DAO? Yeah, it looks, looks like there's an actual bug in this code. So mm -hmm. we were initializing the amount of uh, members at uh, two to the power 255 plus one, two to one. And of course it will be increasing if you have more members. And here it's uh, using uh, the one it's uh, off by one error so uh, yeah you're you're correct in uh, in that that uh, that should be fixed in the in the white paper mm -hmm. um anyway so assuming that uh, the majority the two third majority is there again a little check that you have sent enough value to be able to pay for all the the, the storage copying mm -hmm. um it will iterate over all the memory locations so at offset k there was just the, uh, the 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 counter of how many people have voted for it. Mm -hmm. On k plus one, there is the length of the of the data itself, and k plus two. Let's see, loc. I guess it's a location offset. Now let's let's park that one for now. So we're 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 looping over the the amount of bytes until we're mm -hmm. we have gotten all the data we are setting our destination address mm -hmm. uh, from uh, whatever was passed with uh, the, the, the the code change mm -hmm. no this is not correct was that so be i right I can't it should be i equals one plus i or something i think it should be not copying it from the transaction data it assumes the data to be there that doesn't make sense. But it, it is not even checking that uh, the data is, is the same that was submitted. So it shouldn't be reading the, the transaction data number, but it should be checking these values from the stored location from the contact storage. Yeah, so yeah. it should be copying it from one place of the, the contact storage to uh, to another one. So I think there are a couple issues with this, uh, this piece of code. Right. It looks like we want to have one index... Um, that is the index that is the the storage um, that was saved and one that is the new one that we want for the contract right? exactly ah. right but uh, yep. since it's since it's updating itself right you would just be this, so this I, think, I think we might even be able to fix this right now but let's see yeah we, we could we could let's see if we can fix this because we want the store Let's just make some uh, some changes uh, live. So the first bug we noticed is that uh, two to the power two fifty five was incorrect. So that should be two to the power 
to 55 plus 1. Um, right. Then we had the, the contract length. Mm -hmm. That is okay. And then the location. I, I, I guess you could set an offset uh, as part of your proposal. So you could say at what point in the in the in the in your own contract, uh, uh, what is it? Byte byte space. It should be start modifying. So that would actually be what the first value of this data that you would be copying. So this right. this yeah. kind of this kind of makes sense actually, but it shouldn't be copying this from the transaction data itself. It should mm -hmm. be copying this from right exactly contract dot storage and then k plus i yeah there we go and also when doing the the value check mm -hmm. it shouldn't look at transaction dot data n but it should be looking at well let's just move this line up a little bit so we know the length Mm -hmm. And we just check if the value using reusing the same the same uh, the same variable l. Right. I think that should that should be it. We're close at the very least. So let's uh, commit commit or change mm -hmm. fix off by one with membership and copying from contract storage. There we go. So there we have a DAO. Now, now we have a, a very minimalistic DAO, but it's interesting. It can, it can change its own, its own code. Mm -hmm. So starting with this, you can make it do uh, whatever you want in the, in the future. So could we actually add users to the this in its own form? Or? I think what we yeah. could do. I mean, what we if we want to add users, mm -hmm. um, probably we, you want to have another kind of proposal. Yeah. So you want to have a proposal type for adding a user or removing a user. Right. And then people would be voting for it. And then again, if there's a majority on, on adding or removing them, then that change would uh, would be applied. Mm -hmm. um, I think one way to do that is instead of just having the offset K for the vote count and K plus one for the length and K plus two for the offset, there would be another, I don't know, K plus three, or, or maybe that would be K plus one and you would move the other, the other offset fields um, and you would have the the proposal type or uh, so one type could be a membership change and another type could be a code change so that way you can you can have multiple kinds of proposals in there and people could be voting for them and then depending on what actually what what the the type of uh, proposal is it would either change the 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 contact storage itself uh, uh, copying the bytes over or it would just modify one user uh, and 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 set and set the, the value for him. Well, maybe that'll be the subject for another video. I think that's uh, that's a good one to do another time. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for explaining the egalitarian DAO to us, Joris. Sure. Talk to you next time.